Hello, John Hall from Loose Creek Guitars. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about bracing today. I, I know a lot of people who are starting to build are probably questioning some of the terms of the different bracing. I'm sure you're hearing X bracing, A frame bracing, hybrid bracing. Um, a lot of that has to do actually with the neck joint. Uh, the hybrid bracing has more to do with the change from the dovetail joint to the mortise and tenon joint. Years ago when they had a 15 series or whatever they were dovetails. But to save money I think it was back in the 80s when they reinstituted the, the D8, the D15, or when they created the D15, that went with a tongue, well not a tongue and groove, but a mortise and tenon joint. Now the mortise and tenon joint, this is a dovetail block, okay? You can see there's a dovetail cut into it. Then we have the bolt-on neck. So, here we go. We got the dovetail and we have the bolt on. So, this is a simple bolt on joint. This goes into that, gets bolted in. Dovetail, it's a little bit more of a mechanical joint. The difference between the two isn't so much the complication of how to actually set the neck, because when you set the neck, you still have to adjust the heel. The simplicity of it is that you use a bolt to tie this all together. The dovetail, you use, this is actually your connecting joint. How, as this gets tighter, this face gets locked into this face, and that's how the dovetail will work. This just relies on the bolt fastener. Now in the case of Martin, they have stopped using the plain bolt on as we know it, and went with what they call the simple dovetail. Now the simple dovetail, this will have a simple sliding dovetail and they actually set the neck into a, a CNC machine and it will read the body and then cut the dovetail and the fingerboard extension into the body in order for it to fit the proper geometry of the neck set. For those of us that build guitars, this is what they use. Some guys will use one bolt. If you're not going to glue it, you should have at least two bolts. Uh, this is a neck block from LMI. This is a Martin neck. It doesn't fit perfectly, but it gives you the understanding of what's happening. Now, the different type of neck fixturing hardware, some people use a barrel joint. I actually use a uh, threaded insert, much like what Martin does. This is a threaded insert, and these are identical to the same ones Let's see if Martin uses. Now a lot of people think that you use the, the slot to put it in with the screwdriver, but in reality that isn't the way it works. This will go into the neck like this. That gets put into here. You can glue it if you want to. And then that will just get locked into here. And that is actually a very strong joint, believe it or not. It's a standard quarter 20 thread. And I just dropped my shoulder bolt. And it's a standard quarter 20 thread. Uh, I don't care too much for the barrel joints that come across here. And the reason why I don't, you end up having drilled a hole here. And you only have maybe a quarter of an inch of wood in the front here to hold it. I definitely don't like the hanger bolts that other people use, which are basically a, a lag bolt with a section of quarter 20, but they will work. Uh, I like these the best. If you sat and did the mathematics of this surface area, all right, and how far in it goes, I know a lot of you may not believe me, but that is a lot stronger than some of the barrel bolts that people use. Uh, I will one day actually bolt one of these to a something firm and show you that when you stand on them, how strong they actually are. That's still the strongest joint. Is that joint better than this joint? The answer is, if you believe it, I love dovetails and that's what I use. I'm a traditionalist. 
you have a very tight joint. This joint is self-locking. This joint requires a mechanical fastener. The problem also is when you look at the joint itself, this joint, when it's under stress, gets tighter. This joint, when it's under stress, right here, if you glue it, the glue is in shear and the glue can fail. That is why if you're going to do a bolt on, put two bolts on and you can rely on the two bolts not glued to be a strong mechanical fastener. Uh, which one's better? It's up to you. I prefer the dovetail. I go to a lot of guitar shows. There are a lot of good builders that use a bolt-on neck and they're very successful. Uh, I'm a traditionalist. I, like the, I do like my, my, my dovetail. But it's all into the joint integrity. So I hope that helps clarify a little bit of that. And please don't be afraid to make a comment. Now, the next step, what we want to talk about is bracing. We have all kinds of different bracing. Forward shifted, rear shifted, scalloped. Oh, the list goes on and on. Martin has done a lot of different bracing through the years. Uh, this is the location for the 1937. In 1939 they forward, well they call it forward shifted, that was a 37, rear shifted was 39. And what they did, these are actual Martin patterns, and what actually happened is the bracing, this is forward shifted. So if you measure from the sound hole back, it's approximately one inch. Mr. Farnsworth made that discovery. So you can see right here at the apex of where the braces go across to the bottom of the sound hole, it's one inch. I rather prefer to think of it from the 14th fret down being about nine inches. And the reason why I like to think about that there are some instances, like in a 12 fret dread, uh, you might have 19 frets instead of 20. So the key has to do with where the apex of this bracing pattern happens to fall in relationship to the edge of the body. Most of the times you're going to see it right here, but you're going to find that the rear shifted would actually be forward by about three eighths of an inch. Now I have a 39 pattern. All right, now, for lack of a better discussion now, this is 1937. After about 39, the bracing became forward shifted. So if I put my pattern on here, I don't know if I can get this to really show up that well. But, probably the best way I can show this, if you look really, really close, if you look close here and zero in, right here, the sound hole is parallel, and right here is actually, you can see there's nothing here, but right here, the bracing literally is right on the other side of that line. So this actually went down, and now you're going to see from the sound hole, you are a little over an inch and a, about an inch and three eighths. So what happened in 39, the bracing went further back. That is rear shifted. I don't know why they call the 37 forward shifted, where that is actually the original position. Other changes that happened through the years is this angle, which is about 99 degrees, got turned down to about 95 degrees. So the different brace angles through the period, let's see, what have I got there? This, this will work. That will show up a lot better. So through the years, as these angles changed, Uh, 
I hope we can, okay, this will be good. Now this one is showing up, and you can see my clear patterns right on the top, so that you can see that these, oops, <laughs> there we go. So you can see the holes line up. So this happens to be a modern, let's call it pre or post 1940 <coughs> bracing pattern. This pattern here is from a 1931. And you can see the shape has changed. Not much, but up here, you can see in the shadows here, this has changed. But now you can see the difference in the relationship of what happened to the braces. And this is again a forward and a rear type of shift, but you can see how the angles changed. When I put that here, you can see how the angles changed. And I got this information came off of a modern guitar. This one came off of 1931. So Things through the years changed a little bit, Martin. They were not 100, they were hand built. And it wasn't until the 80s that Martin actually kind of formalized the body shapes through the use of CNC. In the old days, they were handmade patterns, and there really was no blueprint on any Martin guitar until Dick Boat started in the 70s. And I think the first thing that he made a blueprint of was actually the dovetail neck block. Uh, but as far as I know, there are no available blueprints to any Martin guitars out there that are really accurate or authorized from a Martin guitar. Uh, there are some drawn, I think, by uh, Dan McRosty. They're sold at Stu Mac, and I think you can actually buy that same blueprint through uh, C.F. Martin's 1833 shop. So if you're going to get into building, my best advice is to build one to a particular pattern or blueprint, and don't make a lot of changes between guitar A and guitar B. Make small changes, learn the cause-effect relationship to those changes, and learn to make your guitar. So with that, my shop to yours. Bye-bye.